Kowalski, you were at Jack Ma's speech where he outlined some pretty audacious visions for the company to be bigger than even Walmart in the next 10 years. What did Jack Ma promise and do you think it's obtainable? Bigger than even Walmart is what he said. Now remember, Alibaba had $390 billion in U.S. dollar in uh, gross merchandise volume last year. It's a little bit different of a number than Walmart's sales number, $485 billion. But it's safe to say that that's a number he's aiming for, and he says he can probably do that in 2015. So what he's really selling here is pitching to U.S. businesses to sell through Alibaba into consumers in China. And that is how he's uh, is projecting he can be bigger than what's known as the retail giant here in the States. Duncan, I was very interested by how Jack Ma outlined the international opportunity for Alibaba. He basically described it in terms of cross-border commerce, so American companies but selling to the Chinese middle class. How, how surprising was that to you, uh, you know, considering people have been expecting Alibaba to kind of go the other way and come to the U.S. and sell to American consumers? Well, you know, I think he's pretty cautious in the sense that we've seen some of the um, failures, frankly, of some Chinese companies who've kind of rushed into the U.S. market. Uh, down in uh, Portland, Oregon, there was, uh, you know, Leaning tried to set up uh, right opposite Nike and this, you know, grand scheme, and, and it didn't work. So, you know, I think he's right in the sense that the Chinese consumer market is growing the fastest. They, they're going to play to their strengths there. From here in Washington State, you know, cherries have been been exported in the pallet load uh, by air freight to uh, consumers on Tmall. So, you know, there's a, a clear demand and there's a clear supply, and he's focusing on that first. It's not to mean, not to say he's not going to be ambitious about the U.S. later. Right. To that point, Crid, Alibaba has been a major investor in U.S. companies. I mean, from Snapchat to Lyft to Zulily to the new e-commerce marketplace in the U.S., Jet.com. What are Alibaba's ambitions when it comes to the U.S.? Is it just, as Jack seemed to outline today, a cross-border commerce opportunity? Absolutely not. And we've spoken on this show before. Jack Ma and Alibaba are placing some very, very strategic bets. Um, and not just in U.S. investments in commerce, but also in mobile users, uh, such as the, the investment in Snapchat. And also, let's not forget video and personal finance. They're putting bets everywhere. The near-term focus of more commerce into China is really about next quarter and the, maybe the quarter after or the remainder of the year's revenue. These longer-term bets, I think, will play out and will contribute to future revenue. And Duncan, how important is the international expansion considering the Chinese economy, according to some accounts, is slowing down in terms of growth? No, I, I agree with that point. I think, firstly, the international investments are strategic for China as well. Don't forget, they're involved in a very intense competition with Tencent in mobile, which is uh, explaining a lot of their mobile investments, also with JD in the domestic e-commerce market. So the first line of defense is offense. So invest in U.S. companies that can help them at home, but also absolutely I agree that they are looking to the long term to place bets here. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of the Chinese strategy of uh, biding your time. Um, they're definitely busy here, but they're, they're, they're very busy in China right now with the competition. So Jack Ma today also addressed counterfeiting, saying Alibaba is doing everything it can to stop it. Alex, do you think this makes U.S. companies hesitant to work with Alibaba, or are they more comfortable now considering what they heard from Jack? I mean, with, with the, uh, the suit that's outstanding against Alibaba right now, it does make U.S. companies take pause. And I think that's a little bit of Jack Ma's strategy here in getting into the U.S. and slowly knowing the U.S. consumer. He was extremely impassioned today talking about what Alibaba has done to bring that counterfeit number down to only one out of eight, 860,000 transactions, which he says is smaller than the, than the market in general. So he's really trying to tackle some of these things. But, you know, inside the U.S., it can be a bit of an echo chamber and when you have a company coming from a country that that US consumers are not as comfortable with that might be one of the hiccups and one of the reasons he's taking a more measured approach in terms of getting into selling to US buyers so Jack today also predicted that many US internet companies will find success in China over the next 10 years Crid, for Google, you were a part of this battlefield. Um, you know, do you think Jack's right that U.S. Internet companies will start to have more success? And how, how involved could Alibaba be in making that happen? Hugely. Um, I, I could certainly say that someone like a Google and many others, including the company I'm with now, General Mobile, would love to partner with someone like an Alibaba because now they have tremendous reach. They have solved a lot of really tough issues. Um, we believe that they have actually quite good relationships with the government at all levels. 
and they have um, uh, cloud computing services, which is perfect for an internet company's infrastructure. So they would be absolutely um, a, a, part, a great ally to allow the reverse to happen, which we've not yet seen, which is American companies be successful in China.